Hello guys, do you remember me? I'm Orbitor, your Welsh engineer, and this is going to be a quick tutorial because some people have been complaining that their rockets are flipping out. So, flipping hell, let's go and solve that problem, shall we? Okay, I've done this, this is a mock-up of what I did for the space station tutorial, which most of the people have been watching and have been complaining about their rockets flipping out. So, let's get the thrust up, T, and, well, we got. don't forget to engage the SAS, that is, always helps, and let's launch. Okay, normally the launch profile is for this game, as in version 1.0, not the older versions. I don't know what guys, what versions you guys are using. You have to start tilting over straight away from launch. Because that way you don't get the lifting body physics. You don't have to flip out. Do not forget to stage once your rocket fuel funds out on some of your rockets. Okay, now let's press F12. This will get the aerodynamics overlay. And let's see what happens if I go over the yellow circle. Yes, you can see all the blue lines are lifting body dynamics. And what is that doing? Well, you're going sideways to the air. You're supposed to be going to the prograde vector, which if I can find it on the navable by here, you're supposed to be following that. That is the direction that this capsule is now going. And if you're launching a rocket, you have to head directly for that. So let's go and revert this flight to launch and I can show you how to do it properly, or at least how I do it. There is no perfect way to launch into orbit. However, this one rule does count. Okay, let's set up our launch again. Press T to engage SAS. Z to get full thrust. And press spacebar in five, four, three, two, one launch okay now we're going up I'm gonna start tilting over to about five degrees and then we're gonna let ourselves steady out you can see this is the yellow marker is drifting to the right this is called a gravity turn gravity is pulling us sideways making sure that our gravity well making sure that we're tilting sideways okay first rockets away press F12 the, the aerodynamics overlay on board and you see, I'm keeping center to this yellow marker. That means the air is rushing around us and not pushing on the sides to make us go sideways. I have extra control things, units on this, as well as the capsule torque. I have winglets as well, that you can see the yellow lines which are pushing us in the direction. Also note, if you have a really fast, and don't ask me about that thing up there. That's the, I assume that's for the capsule thing in Majigi there. So, you can see that also you can see the red lines that's the atmospheric drag that's the what air is pushing against the top of this and causing drag throughout the entire rocket and you can see because I'm staying close to the center of the yellow circuit circle we are doing all right however there are times when things go wrong say like the payload is not secure and it wobbles around it can cause your rocket and I forgot to stage them yes because I was talking uh, if you wobble if your payload wobbles the stuff inside here if this wobbles then it's possible that it'll send you of course and send you not to go center of the yellow circle so you're gonna have to secure that i can't tell you how to do that uh, this is i have troubles trying to get it in between the fairing here and the main rocket body so you're gonna have to be creative that way engineer your own designs man also you can have extra control like these winglets and as a matter of fact I've also noticed another thing another flaw with my design that I used for the space station when I first off and I didn't realize it at the time okay well, let's hit X because we're going to 128 meter um, kilometers add maneuver and get into orbit as such. Now hopefully you know maneuver nodes and etc. Now I have to note this is a bit harder in career mode because sometimes you do not have the SAS control especially if you don't have a pilot and all other things like that. <laughs> you don't have all the equipment that I have on here perhaps. 
That is why I play this game in sandbox mode, because it is much more fun. You have everything there. You can plan your own missions rather than do those silly missions where you have to test an engine at this certain height and whatnot. Yeah, I found it a bit tedious, but one day I will play career mode. Let's use the computer to do maneuver mode. And fast forward. 20 second burn to get into orbit. I'm not going to do this properly. Whoops, easy. Okay, this is going to be a 50 second burn to get into orbit. Never mind. That's handy because that will go back. The rocket, the, <laughs> the rocket that got us into space will burn up in the atmosphere and we'll be just be left off with this stuff to get rid of. And this is the station core, which I did in the first episode of Building My Space Station Tutorial. Okay, while well, this is getting to orbit, I know this is going to get into orbit. You know this is going to get into orbit. I'm going to cut the video here and show you go to the VAB to show you something that I realized from my design and other ways that you can stabilize your rockets. Okay, guys, now that we're in the VAB, the thing that I forgot to note, the thing that I should have realized, being an engineer and all, right, these fuel ducts. Now, if you're doing asparagus staging, I'm hoping, I'm going to guess that you know how to do asparagus staging. That's just feeding fuel from one end to the other. Jets in these tanks, and these tanks will be full, and then the same for that. These will burn out, they'll be empty, but then center tank will be full because we're transferring the fuel across. Simple explanation, I'm not going to go into any more detail. But they're on the top of the tanks. And what is this causing? That means these tanks will empty... These tanks will then empty, transferring all the fuel to this top tank. And then the same will happen. These will empty first, I think. Or may not empty first. But then these will empty, but they're feeding the fuel into the top tank here. Now, I don't think it matters so much, perhaps because they empty from the top down and the center tank will be fully fueled. But just in case, just in case this theory of mine is correct... Put a fuel dex, let's press what you do, on the bottom. That way you'll make sure that the fuel is entering the bottom of the rocket and not the top. And the reason is, if your rocket is heavier at the top, it's going to be harder to balance. Imagine a pencil balancing on your finger. Now, if there's a heavy object on the top of the pencil, now that is going to be harder to balance. In other words, the center of mass is up here, so any slight deviation, if I can get... Select the entire rocket and oh, wrong way. Tilt it that way. The center of mass is higher, so you'll tip over easy. But if center of mass is lower, you'll have more room for control and it won't tilt over, tip over. If you know basic physics. I say basics. Perhaps some of you are still learning it in school. I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to this reconfiguring this fuel let's not put it through the winglet okay that is set up so as, as much of the center of mass will be at the bottom as possible because you're pushing it at the bottom it's best to have as much weight from at the bottom than at the top now aerodynamic drag one thing you can do you can add more winglets so let's get these um, I can yeah, let's put four there, and what I'll do... I know it'll look odd, but we could put them like that. <laughs> okay, it doesn't look right, but there you go. That's extra control. I don't like that, so I won't do that. There is other things you can do. Now, in real life rocketry, they use a veneur engines. Now, I'm not entirely sure if they do use them in flight in the atmosphere but they will help so if i put symmetry four get the center of mass here is the center of mass and symmetry to four going went so put them equal distance from the center of mass so let's put one up there i'm using my finger on the screen so you can't see that by measuring this and i think four there now, when you engage SAS, well, it's just got two by there, let's engage four, I say, four. 
Now these will act like RCS, but they don't use RCS fuel. They use liquid oxidizer and liquid fuel and oxidizer. So that way you don't need to add RCS tanks when launching, which would mean adding tanks, I suppose, on the outside would cause drag and perhaps cause you to flip out easily. Much more easily, anyway. So, yes, that is the basic tips. There are also other ways to control it. Here you have the advanced inline reaction wheel. You can add that to the top of your rocket. Or say if you're doing a big, huge, big ass rocket, and these are huge boosters, you could add these inline stabilizers on these. As such, and on there. That way you get extra control. Now the place which I seem to fail at a lot is stabilizing your payload. That yes, that's what that's right. Payload is it called? Okay, let's make this a bit more ridiculous. Yes, the docking ports appear. If you use a lot of docking ports. Put one there. And put that there. And if we go launch that now, you will notice that that will wobble and may cause us to get out of control, flipping the rocket over. Now the only way I found about this, uh, found a way around this, is to add as many struts as possible in your design. So perhaps what you can do is add the girders at some point, add the struts connected to the girders, and some of your designs may be best without the fairing. Because I've noticed if you put a fairing on here and put the fairing around your payload, you can't put a strut between the outside rocket and the payload inside the fairing, which I always try to do because sometimes it doesn't load properly when you launch your rocket. So let's go launch. And look at that wobbliness. Yes. I started oscillation. I'm doing wild control, trying to get that gravity turn. Now I've flown rockets with worse wobbling, but oh no, this is quite bad. And yes, we flipped out. We're, we're virtually out of control. That I can't control this. We're gonna, we're gonna crash. No, no, no. Can we do it? Can we do it? I did act extra control, so it may be a bit easier with this one. Anyway, you get my meaning. Trying to add extra struts to it, get this true strutted up properly is hard. So if you can get away, don't use the fairing. But if you need the fairing, you can do so. Don't forget the fairings add weight to the rocket. So it gets you out of control. Okay, one last tip, and then I'll suppose we can wrap this uh, this quick tutorial out. Okay, guys, so this is the last part of the tutorial. I'm using the same design rocket that I used for the space station. So let's engage SAS. Press Z for full thrust. And this time we're going to launch. As soon as we launch, we're going to head over to five degree five degrees at 90 then i'm going to press the prograde marker key okay so let's do this but first off let's get engineer up and i got this up because i like to keep the thrust to weight ratio between 1.5 to 2 as you can see it's just going to start off low but it's going to build up quickly because we're going to lose weight so let's go and launch in three two one launch okay Let's tilt over to about 5 degrees. Wait for speed to build up slightly. No, we're tilting over slightly too much. Now let's press the prograde marker. What's going to happen now? The rocket is automatically going to follow the prograde marker. I'm going to make sure we stay at the thrust to weight ratio of around 2, maybe a bit higher. Oh, and stage the rockets as well at the same time. So all I'm going to do is control the throttle and the space bar. I don't have to touch the controls at all for tilting the rocket. And you can see we're doing a nice gravity turn. All I have to do is when we get to 2110, thrust down so we get to another 2. two. Now, if you, if you are not tilted over as much as you would like, 
you could reduce your thrust so you twist over a bit more, you tilt over to gravity through a bit more, so gravity is having more effect than the thrust, keeping you straight. As I'm doing by here, let's get to 1.6. And if I bring it down to 1.5, we should start tilt or less, we should start tilting over more. Now this looks like a proper rocket launch. It's nice and smooth and it works with almost every rocket, especially if you have enough control on it. So this is a method that you could use, take away, and get into orbit, or at least into space. Get into orbit is the easy part then. You just have to make a maneuver node and follow that. Anyway guys, that is it for this episode quick tutorial. I'm... Uh, yeah, let's do the outro. I'm Orbator. Trust me, I'm an engineer. A space Welsh engineer. <laughs>